I said at the very beginning of the semester that equilibrium was essential to what we're doing this semester. You could think of equilibrium almost as a synonym for statics. What I'm going to look at right today is the equilibrium of particle in two dimensions. What I'm looking at basically is what Newton said about a single object in space. Some of the forces acting on that has to be equal to zero unless it's accelerating. And we're not going to do that. So we're always going to have the sum of the forces on our objects equal zero. So if I have these three forces, they have to add up to zero. I can put that in a force triangle if I wanted to, and saying that they equal zero means that I come back to where I started from. So A plus B has to equal the 40, or A plus B plus 40 equals zero. In general, that's a little bit more complicated than what we always want to do, especially as we get to more and more forces that we're adding up. What's more common is to say that the sum of the forces in X equals zero, and the sum of the forces in Y equals zero. If you want to think about that, there's no way to get a mile east by going north and south. It just doesn't work. So you can't have forces in the x direction contributing to forces in the y direction, because they are perpendicular. The steps that we're going to use to solve these problems are really important. Start by reading the problem, because that's where you're going to find more information. Then you're going to draw a free body diagram. We already talked about how to do that. These three forces that I had a minute ago, I could have in a generic free body diagram that would look like this. If you're going to solve this using equilibrium, some of the forces in X and Y, you probably want to go ahead and list your forces in Cartesian form. If I take these three forces and put them in Cartesian form, this is what I end up with. To sum the forces in X and set them equal to zero, I'm just going to add the I's. Summing the forces in Y and setting them equal to zero sums these three J's. And now I have two equations and two unknowns that I can solve. 